Hello, Peace Baptist. These are your announcements for the week of Sunday, January 9th, 2022. Attention all men at Peace Baptist. The men's ministry wants to connect with you. To get notifications of any Bible studies, outings, or anything else going on, send a text to 81010 and in the body type at PBCM652. That's the at symbol with PBCM652. This will put you in the group messaging and you'll be notified of any men's ministry events. Any questions, see Ed, Terry, or Matt. Be praying for the Peace Baptist family. Be praying for the sisters of Maggie Harmon, Mike and Marie Latham, Robin Bostick and Tamika Starks, Hannah Rice and family, Minister Tracy Tiller and family, and Betty Wolfwork and family. Pray for healing for Mary Cowan, for Doris Scott, Emma Johnson, May Tavis, Tracy Norman, Lena Barnes, Patricia Barnes, John Roberts, and John Miller, who's Nina Sal's uncle who's battling cancer, Joyce Cargill, Kenny Smith, and Lena Johnson. Be praying for our new pastor, Tom Brame Sr., the Peace Baptist Church Leadership and Congreg- Congregation, Angel Lewis Thane, school administrators, teachers, and students of the Avondale community, the city of Cincinnati, government leaders, and those affected by natural disasters and violence throughout the world. And lastly, happy birthday to all the January birthdays. Happy birthday to Denise Smith, Vincent Starkey, Misha McDaniel, Lucille McClure, Dorothy Wingfield, Philip Cargill II, Kivana Bradley, Lena Johnson, Mary Antoinette Brown, Daryl Gibson, and Laverne Harmon. There is no greater name. We can just sit here and say Jesus all day because we know his name is above all names. There's no name that's greater than his name. And we know that every knee shall bow when it comes to Jesus' name. We know that name, that name means a lot to us. We know he's our Lord, he's our Savior. There's no other name that is greater than the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, praise team, for allowing us just to realize that we have a Savior. Not only a Savior, we have a Lord that loves us enough that he'll die on the cross for all of us. There's no other name that is above his name. Praise God for that. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for that, 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 that sacrificial lamb that you had given us. Thank you for that line of Judah that we know that we can count on him because there's no other name that is above his name. God, we know that you have promised us you promised us an inheritance and allow us to realize what that inheritance is and go out and claim it as we know that you have already given us the victory. We'll forever give that name that is, that is greater than any name, Jesus Christ, all of our honor, our glory, and our praise. Amen. Amen, amen. This morning, this morning, good morning, good morning to all. Good morning. Uh, today, we're still journeying through uh, this sermon series on looking forward in faith, looking forward in faith. And we're still in Joshua. We're in Joshua chapter 14. We're going to be reading out Joshua chapter 14, focusing on uh, verses 10 through 14. But also, I want you to thumb, put your thumb in numbers. We're going to also look at Numbers chapter 14, verse 24. But throughout this sermon, keep your thumb in Numbers, because we'll be journeying through chapter 13 and 14 of Numbers. But the focus is going to be one on Joshua chapter 14, verses 10 through 14, and also Numbers chapter 14, verse 24. If you can all stand as we read first, Joshua chapter 14, verses 10 through 14. And the reason follows. He said, and now behold, the Lord has kept me alive. He said these 45 years ever since the Lord spoke this word to Moses while Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now here I am this day, 85 years old. As yet I am as strong this day as on the day that Moses sent me, just as my strength was then. So now is my strength for war, both for going out and coming in. Now, therefore, give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in that day. For you heard in that day how the how the Anakin were there in the city and that the cities were great and fortified. It may be that the Lord will be with me 
and I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord said. As Joshua blessed him and gave Hebron to, to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, as an inheritance, Hebron therefore became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the, the, uh, Ken, the Kenizzite, to this day, because he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. Now let's go back to Numbers chapter 14, verse 24. This is God saying, he said, but my servant Caleb, because he has a different spirit in him and has followed me fully, I will bring him to the land where he went and his descendants shall inherit it. May God bless the doers of his word. Amen. 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 You may all be seated. So today, if I was to title this sermon, it would be called, That's My Mountain. That's My Mountain. That is my mountain. That is my mountain. Last week I had you um, ponder or meditate on three questions. Three questions last week. How big was your God? How big is your faith? And how big is the biggest prayer that you prayed? I don't know if you went home and journeyed through this week and, um, and really prayed to God those big prayers. But today I'm only going to ask you to meditate on one question. One question. And that question is, what is stopping you from possessing your mountain. What is stopping you from possessing your mountain? And you might say, Pastor Tom, a mountain? You know, I don't even like heights, but why do I need, need a mountain? You know, what's going on with the mountain? But we know this mountain that we are to possess is an inheritance. See, some of us don't even realize that we have an inheritance. When Jesus Christ died on the cross, do you know that he left you a will? He left you a will. And, and what is stopping you from claiming that will, that inheritance that Jesus left us? And we see in Ephesians, Paul writes in Ephesians 1. He writes in Ephesians 1, verse 13 and 14, he says, And you, and you also were included in Christ when you heard the word of, of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Having believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance upon the, redemp upon the redemption of those who are in God's possession. You see, we are given an inheritance. God wants us to have an inheritance. Jesus died. He left us an inheritance. He left us a will. But some of us don't even realize that. We don't realize that we have an inheritance. Even Paul went on to pray. In Ephesians chapter 1, he went on in verse 18, he says, I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope which is called to you, those riches and glory, the, the glorifications of Christ. You see, some of, of us don't even realize that we have that inheritance. And God wants us to have that inheritance. He wants us to receive that inheritance. And why is that? He wants us to receive that inheritance because it's a place of deeper fulfillment that you have ever known before. It is a place of greater intimacy with the Lord. It is a place of prosperity in your soul. It's a place of prosperity in your body. And it's a place of prosperity in your spirit. God wants us to have this inheritance. And I believe that God wants us to have the same promise, that same promised land that he wanted the children of Israel to have. God wants us to have that, that inheritance for you individually. God wants us to have that inheritance for you, for your family. And he wants us to have that inheritance as a church. And I truly believe as this church, he wants us to possess the mountain that he has given us. We are on this brink. We are on the border of, of the Jordan River. We've been here for 100 years. God wants us to possess the land that he has promised us. We are about to cross that Jordan. We are in front of the walls of Jericho, and God wants us to go in and possess the land that he has promised us. As this church, what is stopping us from getting the inheritance that God has promised us? What are the things that are stopping us? Now, I preached, I think, eight sermons on Joshua. And I mentioned, but I didn't talk about this one dude. I mentioned this one dude, I think, in every sermon. 
And this dude is Caleb. I mentioned about Caleb. We know a little bit about Caleb, right? We know that Caleb, and it's always mentioned when, when we study Joshua, that Caleb was one of the 12, one of the 12 spies that was sent out by Moses from God to spy on this promised land. And we know Caleb was one of the two, him and Joshua, that came back with the minority report. You know, he came back with the minority report. We had a 10 that came back with the majority report. But Caleb and Joshua came back with that minority report. They came back with a favorable report that we can go into this land. And now we see Joshua and, in, in, uh, I'm sorry, now we see Caleb in Joshua chapter 14. We, we see Caleb and Joshua. Now we see Caleb and Joshua. And, and uh, Caleb says, he says, in verse 10, he says that these 45 years later, and then he says, now I'm 85 years old. Caleb is 85 years old, now in Joshua chapter 14. So that means that he was 40 years old when he was sent to spy on the promised land. He was 40 years old. And the only people that we see is Joshua and Caleb. Joshua now is, I mean, we, last week we saw how Joshua, through the help of God, he conquered all these five kings. And I think in, in uh, chapters uh, 11, 12, and 13, you'll see that the children of Israel captured uh, or conquered this land. So now Joshua is divining out the land to the tribes, to the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, Caleb is the elder statesman. He's 85 years old because we know that everyone else died out. Now, Caleb is, is, is the first one. The first one that Joshua is going to divvy out this land, this, this portion of this promised land. Now, I remember um, when I was working in management, at the end of the year, we used to always have these bonuses. And they used to tell us, give them to your direct report. So we would know what the other supervisors and managers were, were getting. And they would tell us, you know, make sure when you give your, these uh, people their bonuses, you explain why they got what they got. Because some people's bonuses were going to be different than the others. Now, there's times, so I would call them to my office one, one by one. And there were some of them who would listen. You know, but then there were some of them who were like, Thomas, just give me my bonus. This is what Caleb said. Caleb was like, give me my mountain. Joshua, I don't care what you think I want. He said, give me my mountain. He knew what his, his inheritance was. And he told Joshua, bro, I've been with you for 45 years, man. Give me my mountain. And this is what Caleb, he was, he was all, he, Caleb knew what his inheritance was. But then we start thinking, I start thinking, why was Caleb one of the ones that after 45 years, he possessed the mountain. He possessed the inheritance that God gave him. What was so special about Caleb? What qualities did Caleb possess that would allow him to live out and receive the inheritance that God gave him? What can we learn through Caleb that will allow us to get the inheritance or get that mountain that God has given us? What is it? about Caleb. So then now I had to look at, let's go to number, Numbers 14. In Numbers 14, we see that this is, you know, uh, during Numbers 13 and 14, we know about the recon mission. We know about the, about the um, minority report and the majority report. But now we see how, how God was upset with the children of Israel. He was upset with them because they rejected him. God told them that I'm going to give you this promise, and they rejected the promise. So now Moses has to go and do this intercessory prayer to God about not wiping out the children of Israel because God was ready to wipe them out. And Moses did this prayer. And then God, okay, he spoke to Moses and said, okay, I got you. He said, well, this is what I'm going to do. They need to be punished. So he said, I'm going to punish them. And all the ones who rejected me, and these were all the adults, anyone 20 years old and over, he said they will not inherit or go into the promised land. They will wander in the desert for how many days 
that we did this, that you did this recon mission, that's how many years they're gonna wander in the desert. That recon mission was 40 days. So God said they will wander in the wilderness for 40 years. And he said no one over 21 will be able to go into the promised land, except, except for Joshua and Caleb. That's what God says later on in that chapter. But in verse 24, he says in Numbers 14, verse 24, he said, but my servant Caleb, this is God talking about Caleb. He said, but my servant Caleb, because he has a different spirit in him and he followed me fully, he said he will inherit that mountain. His descendants will inherit the mountain. So I started looking at that. I'm thinking, wow, okay. Caleb. Now we know he followed God. And most of us would jump right to that, that he wholly followed God. Absolutely. He followed God. He was obedient to God. Caleb was, he was, he was obedient to God. He followed God. It means that he was with God. When God said move, he moved. Caleb followed God. But we cannot overlook what he said about Caleb also. He said he had this different spirit. He said, Caleb possessed this different spirit. Most people, most of us, you know, you know we heard uh, um, about what they say about us Christians, that we are a peculiar people. Peculiar, another synonym for peculiar, is different. We are a different people. Most of us want us want to hear God say, well, good, my, well done, my good and faithful servant. I want God to say, Tom has a different spirit. Because that spirit that's different is different than what the world is. We have a spirit that's different than the world. We want God to say, my servant has a different spirit. Because it says the reason why Caleb got his inheritance was because he fully followed God and he had this different spirit. And what does that different spirit look like? We cannot overlook what that different spirit is. And there are five reasons why the children of Israel did not possess the mountain, possess the promised land that God gave them because of their spirit. And there's five spirits that Caleb possessed or had that allowed him to get into the promised land. And once again, I want us to be numbering, keep your, keep your thumb in Numbers chapter 13 and 14 because we'll, be right we'll be going back with that. But this first spirit, the first spirit that would cause you to not uh, to not get the mountain, to not get your inheritance, is that spirit of doubt. See, Israel had a spirit of doubt. And we can look at that because we see in Numbers chapter 13 and verses 2, it says that, they, that, that Moses sent out these spies. But you move down the chapter in verse 26 through 31, it talks about this report that was coming back. 40 days later, these 12 spies came back and gave this report. And they did say, yeah, the land is full of, is flowing with milk and honey, and there are fruit because they brought back, they brought back this, this vine of, of fruit. And, and then they said, but, but, they said that the city is fortified. The city is protected. It has walls. And, they, and then they said that some of the descendants from, from Anak, and Anak you know, uh, uh, um, Goliath came from that lineage. So some of these descendants are giants and we'll be like grasshoppers. And uh, so we cannot go in there. So they doubted God. God said that that um, this is the land that I promised you. So they doubted that God was going to do what he said he's going to do. They doubted God's ability. They had doubt. They didn't believe that God was going to be able to take them through this land and conquer the land. That's what the children of Israel, that's what those 10 spies came back and said, we doubt that God can do what he said he can do. But my man Caleb, that different spirit, Caleb thought, Caleb thought differently. Caleb did not have a spirit of doubt. Caleb, he had a spirit of faith. And when we see that, because Caleb, it says down in, 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 uh, in verse 30 of Numbers 13, it says that, Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, we should go up and possess this land. He said, we should go up and possess this land, for we can certainly do it. Caleb had a spirit of faith. Where did that faith come from? See, Caleb, remember, 
Caleb remembered what God can do. He remembered how big his God was. Caleb remembered that God delivered them out of Egypt. Caleb remembered that during the day, God provided a pillar of cloud to direct them. And during the night, he provided a pillar of fire. Caleb remembered how big his God was. Caleb remembered that in front of the Red Sea, God parted the Red Sea so they can get through. Caleb had a spirit of faith. That, that Caleb is a different kind of dude. He had that different kind of spirit. He did not fall into a spirit of doubt. He had a spirit of faith. What is stopping you from possessing the mountain that God has for you? Do you have those seeds of doubt that's going through your mind? Not my man Caleb. He had that, that seed, that spirit of faith. The second, the second spirit that would cause you to not get the mountain, not claim that mountain that God has for you, is that spirit of fear. Israel had a spirit of fear. They were afraid. They were afraid of what was going on. That doubt sunk in. They were concentrating on, on the uh, circumstances and then fear sinks in. When, when you have doubt, fear is going to sink in. Fear is going to gravitate. Fear is going to grow in your heart. And what, and what did they say? In Numbers uh, 13, verse 32, it said that all that, that bad report spread throughout the, um, throughout the uh, um, Israelites. And then they said that the land we explored devours the living. And then they said all the people that they saw were giants. First, it was just some of the people. But in verse 32 of Numbers, they said all the people. See, fear magnifies your problems. Fear magnifies your circumstances. When you're afraid, now everything grows. Everything is big. And that fear that they had, the doubt that they had, now they said everything, every person in the, the promised land was a giant. Now it says, now it wasn't that some of the city were fortified. Now all the city is going to devour us. That's what fear does, does to us. And I know Caleb, that different bra, Caleb had that different spirit. Caleb wasn't falling for that. See, Caleb believed in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. It said, God does not give us that spirit of fear, but God gives, us that, God gives us power. He gives us love, and he gives us a sound mind. In order for you to not have fear, you have to think differently. And Caleb, if we see what Caleb responded in, in chapter 14 of Numbers, verse 9. Caleb said, and you know what? And it sounded a little bit like what God told Joshua in Joshua 1. Caleb said, only do not rebel against the Lord, he said, and do not be afraid. Do not be afraid of these people in this land because we will swallow them up. He said that their protection is gone, but the Lord is with us. Do not be afraid of them. Caleb told them, do not be afraid. See, Caleb, he believed that God gives us, gives us that spirit of love, that spirit of, of, of that sound mind. Caleb did not fall into that. Caleb believed in Romans 8.31 where it says, if God is for us, who can be against us? He said, the Lord is with us. Who can be against us? See, Caleb had that spirit of courage. He had that spirit of courage. He was not afraid of, 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 of these giants. He saw the same thing, the same thing that these other people saw. He saw those giants. He saw those cities. But he said, if God is for us, who can be against us? See, Caleb had a, a spirit of, of courage, and Caleb had a spirit of faith. Now, that third, that third spirit, that third spirit that will stop you, that will stop you from receiving the inheritance that God gives you is that spirit of self-pity. That spirit of self-pity. The Israelites had that spirit of self-pity. It says, if you look at Numbers chapter 14, verse 1, what did these Israelites do? It said, that night... All the people of the community raised their voices and wept out loud. They cried. They had this self-pity. We know the definition of self-pity is that it's an, it's an unrelenting concentration on your problems and your hardships, but it's coupled with a continuing talking to others who would listen. So basically what it is, self-pity is you're focusing on your problems. You're focusing on your circumstances, and you'll tell it to anyone who wants to listen. 
You'll tell it to anyone who wants to listen. You know, you have this woe is me attitude, the how, I mean, look how bad I am. You know, no one really cares. You know, you sound like that old um, African-American spiritual that, that, that Louis Armstrong, uh, 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 he uh, perfected. He said, nobody knows the troubles I've seen. Nobody knows my sorrow. That's what they were doing. They basically had self-pity on themselves. They had this self-pity. And, I, you know, there's this uh, movie, everyone knows it, but every time it comes on, every time it comes on, th there's a marathon. Uh, Shirley, Jacob, and I always watch it. It's The Godfather. We all, we love, I don't care one, two, and three, even though Shirley and Jacob hate three, I do like Godfather three. But every time there's Godfathers on, we're going to watch it. And we know all the, all the words, all the scenes and whatnot. But at the beginning of Godfather 1, y'all know that there's a wedding. You know, the Godfather has a wedding. I mean, his, his daughter, Connie, was um, getting married. And during a wedding for, you know, these, these Italians, you know, if you're a Godfather, then you can uh, accept some requests. So then... We see Johnny Fontaine. Johnny Fontaine, he's a famous actor, famous entertainer. He comes in, you know, he does a song with Connie. You know, he, everyone's all jumping up and down. So he goes online. He goes back to the Godfather. Godfather, you know, Marlon Brando said, hey, you know, you know, you know how's everything going? Johnny Fontaine, you know, he's getting a little older. He was like, right, Godfather, you know, my voice is a little weak, but, you know, there's this, this producer, you know, he has this film that's coming out. And, you know, in the character, the main character, you know, is all about me. He said, but this producer has a problem with me. And he said, you know, he's not going to give it to me. I need your help. I need your help. And what Marlon Brando do, does, he goes up to him and he slaps him and says, be a man. And that's what God says to us. He says, be, a, be my child. Why do you have self-pity? God does not want us to have self-pity. He's telling us, you are my child. I don't care what obstacle is coming up your way. Be my child. You, you, you don't need to have self-pity because we know self-pity, there's two reactions of self-pity. The first reaction is you'll isolate yourself. You'll isolate yourself. You'll go in your room, you know, you'll curl up in a ball, and you'll just be by yourself. See, Satan doesn't mind if you have a spirit of God. What Satan has a problem with is if you're going to go out and perform and do the destiny that God has you do. So Satan will allow you to stay in your, in your room. We cannot have self-pity. Do not isolate yourself. Another way, another reaction of self-pity is escapism. Basically, you know, you see people, folks going to clubs, you know, going to the bars, can't miss a party. They got to be busy all the time. Or it could be in church. They're in nine ministries. They're a leader of three of them, you know, and they're doing all the work. They're, they're, they're doing all these work because the problem is still going to be there. But they want to stay busy doing the work of the Lord, but they're not addressing the problem. You see, we cannot have self-pity. But my man Caleb, that different kind of dude, Caleb had that different type of spirit. See, Caleb had a spirit of blessings. Caleb did not have that spirit of self-pity. Caleb, it says that in, in the Numbers 14, verse 7, Caleb addresses the whole Israelite assembly. Caleb said, the land we pass through and explore is exceedingly good. That's what Caleb tells them. They're all focusing on these problems. Caleb said, it's all good. We passed through, it's all good. See, Caleb believed in Romans 8, 28. You know, he said, and, you know, Romans 8, 28 is we all know that and, 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 and we know that in all things, God, in all things, God, God is going to make things good in all things. God is going to make things good for those who love him. So Caleb was like, look, everything's good. See, Caleb had that positive attitude, not this self-pity, this woe was me. Caleb had a positive attitude. He was bringing positivity to the, the children of Israel. That's, that's my man Caleb. That's the different kind of spirit that Caleb has. Now, how can you be positive? I know it's tough to be positive when things are all going wrong. It's tough. But how do you remain positive 
And how do you address the negativity and bad situation with, with, with positivity? We are all Christians. We all know that uh, we, we all know the two, the first two di the, uh, disciplines of being a Christian. One is being in the word. We have to be in the word because in this word, there's all type of encouragement. God gives us all kind of blessing. God gives us all types of, 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 of blessings, of promises. That's what's going to get us to have a positive attitude, be in the word. Another way in which we can stay positive in a bad situation is prayer. We have to pray. Last week I said, what is the biggest prayer that you've ever prayed? Prayer gets, gives you that positive attitude. So Caleb, that different type of bruh, had the spirit of blessings. So we see he had a spirit of faith, he had a spirit of courage, and he had that spirit of blessing. Now the fourth type of spirit that will cause you to not, to not receive your inheritance is that spirit of complaining. The spirit of murmuring and complaining. You see, the Israelites... In um, verse 2 of chapter 14 of Numbers, it said all the Israelites grumbled. They grumbled against Moses and Aaron. They grumbled against Moses and Aaron, and the whole assembly said to them, if only we would have died in, in, in Egypt. You see, they, want, they were right on the cusp of getting their promise, and they wanted to go back and be slaves. They wanted to go back and in in a be slaves. See, when you start complaining, most people, when they complain, they're, they're passing the blame, just, just like these Israelites. They said, it said that they grumbled against Moses and Aaron. Moses and Aaron were, were the leaders. So they started pointing their fingers at Moses and Aaron. All you guys point your fingers at, at me. Now, I know I'm, I'm going to make, make some mistakes. Everyone point the finger. I mean, it, it, is, it is not a gun. It's just pointing your finger. You know? But when you point that finger and start complaining, look at your finger. One of them is pointing at the person who you're complaining about, and three of them is pointing right back at you. You see, these Israelites did not take the responsibility on themselves. They did not take that responsibility. They blamed Moses and Aaron for the situation that, that they were in. They, they, they blamed Moses and Aaron. When you start complaining, first of all, you need to see where you are, where you are in this situation. Now, now, of course, the leader could be wrong, Tom, but Pastor Tom could be wrong. And that's a good possibility. I'm probably wrong a lot of times. But see where you are. And, and instead of complaining, what can you do? You see, that different type of brother, Caleb. Caleb, instead of complaining, what did Caleb do? You see, Caleb, he had that spirit of encouragement. The Israelites had the spirit of, of murmuring and complaining. See, Caleb had the spirit of encouragement. And we see that in verse 8 of Numbers 14. It says, if the Lord is pleased with us, he will lead us into the land, a land that's flowing of milk and honey, and he will give it to us. See, Caleb, he, he, he rebutted what they said about the complaining about Moses and Aaron. And Caleb was like, look, look, yeah, there's giants in there. Yeah, the city is fortified, but it does have milk and honey. Look at these grapes. You know, so Caleb was looking at the positivity. Caleb was looking at encouraging. And, and we know that we are a people that are supposed to edify, are supposed to lift people up, supposed to encourage people. Caleb had that encouraging disposition. He had that encouraging spirit. And that's, what, that's where we have to uh, be that type of people who, in any situation, look at the positive, look at the encouragement. We should be bringing people up because there's all types of encouragement that we can give people. How many people have you talked to lately and just encouraged them, encouraged them to keep on, encouraged them to uh, uh, follow the destiny that God had for them? See, Caleb had that kind of spirit. So we have to watch out for the spirit of doubt. We have to watch out for that spirit of fear which is going to lead to a spirit of self-pity and a spirit of complaining and murmuring. And then, and then that's going to uh, accumulate into the last spirit. That last spirit is that spirit of rebellion. What is going to prevent you from getting the promise that God has for you? That spirit of rebellion. We see the children of Israel. They said to one another in verse 4 of Numbers 14, they said, we should choose a leader and go back to Egypt. The, the children of Israel, they were rebelling against God's authority. 
God ordained Moses to be the leader of the children of Israel. The children of Israel decided in verse 4, we need to pick a new leader. We need to pick a, a, a new leader. There was no prayer. They saw the circumstance. They saw the giants. They saw the fortified city. They said, we need to pick our leader and go back, go back in bondage. You see, once you step out of the covenant of God, once you step out of the covenant of God, you are going to be under the enemy's attack. They thought that being with the enemy, they thought that being with, with, with the slaveholders would be better than the promise that God has given them. That's that spirit of, of rebellion. Think about a married couple, a married couple who refused to, who, who refused to submit to one another in fear of God. They would never have a, a true happiness or, or fulfillment. Think about a child. A child who rebels against their parents, had that path of rebellion against their parents. They are never going to be in freedom. They're going to always be under the bondage of, of, of this trouble. You see, once you rebel, once you rebel against, against God, now you're under the attack of the enemy. And that's where the Israelites were. They were under the attack of Israel, I mean, of the enemy. But we see our boy Caleb that different spirit that Caleb had. Caleb was, uh, Caleb was not going against God's authority. Caleb had that spirit of faithfulness. Caleb had a spirit of faithfulness. Caleb even said it. Caleb said it. Um, I'm sorry, I, I don't have that. But Caleb had a spirit of faithfulness. Caleb, <laughs> Caleb we, we know that we can count on Caleb. Well, we uh, know that Caleb had that spirit of faithfulness because he, he was one of the ones that went to the promised land. Caleb was one of the ones that got his inheritance. He, Caleb was faithful to God. Caleb was always faithful to Moses. He was loyal to Moses. Caleb knew that, 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 that uh, Caleb, when you're faithful to God, when you have faithfulness to God, you're able to have faith in God. When you have faithfulness in God, you're able to be faithful to God. And that's where Caleb was. Caleb had this faithfulness in God. He believed that God put Moses and Aaron as our leaders and he followed them. Caleb did not have a problem being a spy, going over in the promised land. He had faith in, in the leadership of Moses. So Caleb had that spirit of faithfulness. He had a spirit of blessings. He had a spirit of encouragement. Caleb also had a spirit of, of, of courage and a spirit of faith. But what is stopping you? What's stopping us from getting the promise that God has for us? Do we have that spirit of doubt, spirit of fear? Do we have that spirit of self-pity? Do we have that, that, um, that um, spirit of, of murmuring and complaining? Do we have the spirit of rebellion? That's going to stop us from moving forward in faith. But we know Caleb, even though he had these, this different type of spirit, guess what? We have a different kind of spirit because I told you that when God, when, when Jesus Christ died, he left us a will. And when he died, because we believe that he's our Lord and we, we believe that he's our savior, Jesus lives in us. We have the spirit residing in us. Y'all know about the fruit of the spirit. We have that love that's in us. We have that joy that's in us. We have that peace that's in us. We have that kindness that's in us. We have that patience that's in us. We have that gentleness that's in us. We have that, that goodness that's in us. We have that self-control that resides in us. We have that faithfulness that's in us. We have something more than what Caleb had because Jesus is in us. What is stopping you from, from, from receiving and getting the mountain that God has already destined for you? What is stopping you from getting that promise? Dear Heavenly Father, dear Heavenly Father, I just pray that you just allow us, each and every one of us who are believers, Father, that you allow us to tap into that promise that you have given us because you you have already deposited in us the holy spirit that has given us that inheritance i just pray father that you can, can, can continue to strengthen us strengthen each and every one of us to to understand that that promise is already destined all we have to do is grab that mountain go and give us that mountain that you have already promised to us father allow us to walk in the spirit 
not by sight, but by faith, Father, faith in you, faith in your son, Jesus Christ, because you've already done everything. Allow us just to continue to have that, 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 that uh, spirit of faith. Continue to let us have that spirit of courage and that spirit of blessing. Allow us to tap into that, um, that spirit of encouragement, Father, and also that spirit of faithfulness. Allow us to be that peculiar person, that, that peculiar people, that different type of person. We want you to tell us, yes, my servant has a different spirit, a spirit that's different than the world, Father. And we know that we're going to be looked at, looked at cross-eyed and looked at uh, uh, being, being crazy. But we know that as long as we follow you, as long as we walk out in, 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 in the direction, the purpose you have for us, Father, that everything is good because you, everything is good for those who love you, Father. And we'll forever give your son Jesus all of our honor, our glory, and our praise. Amen. Amen. At this time, at this time, there might be someone in here, and this is not an invitation to Peace Baptist Church. This is an invitation to the kingdom. It's all about kingdom, it's kingdom focus. There's someone sitting out here who, who might have, who might have had some comparison with the children of Israel the spirit that's keeping them from obtaining that inheritance. See, the inheritance that we have is, is the inheritance of everlasting life, the inheritance of, of eternal life. That's our inheritance, that we're going to live forever with God, with Jesus Christ. And there might be someone out here who, do, who, does not, who has not received that inheritance because they have not accepted Jesus, not only as, his, as their Savior, but as their Lord. If that is you, and we don't want to put you on the spot, but we know that it's not that every day is not a, a guarantee, but every hour is not guaranteed. You do not want to leave out of here thinking, I have one more day. I have one more week. Maybe next week I'll go up and I'll call someone and tell them, yes, I want to be saved. I want to be a child of God. And you might not have that opportunity. Do not be afraid to accept Jesus as your Lord and Jesus as your Savior. If that is you, if you want to raise your hand, we'll have the, 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 uh, the leaders will come to you. We'll come to you and walk this out with you. There might be someone else who who are looking at circumstances, the circumstances bigger than, than them. We, we know our, the, our troubles that we're in, our hardships that we're in, are, they are bigger than us. But you might feel that they're not bigger than God. And you're just focused on those circumstances. And you have that spirit of self-pity. Woe is me, why is this happening to me? Not realizing that, not, not remembering the trouble that you were in before that was bigger than what you're in now. And how God's hand was in there and he got you out. Where's that spirit of faith? Faith in him. And you might need to, someone to help pray for you. You raise your hand. One of, the, one of the leaders will come to you and pray for you. To help tap into that spirit that God has already deposited in you. I'm going to have Minister Orr come up and do a community prayer, if you don't mind. Thank you. 
cannot thank him enough, thank Jesus enough for everything that he has done for us. At this time, are there any first-time visitors, first-time visitors, first-time visitors in our house? Yes, we have a couple first-time visitors. Yes. We want to thank you for coming out. Now, don't be, I know we have this COVID, but you know, we are a loving church, so people are going to come up to you and say hi, welcome you. If you do not have a church home, we would love to uh, have you part of this fellowship, this fellowship of a contagious Christian community loving others to Christ. So don't be afraid after church and say, hey, no COVID. You know, they're going to come up and say hi to you. So uh, thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Um, also... Anyone who wants to give, we have our basket. We can give uh, in the envelopes. If you don't have an envelope, uh, one of the ushers will uh, give that to you. Also, you can um, give on our website, www.peacebaptist.org, or our church app. Um, and then also, I do want to make one little announcement. Uh, the, the women will have, and we'll, I, I'm going to put this out in, in a, a, a robo text, but starting next week, we'll, the women will have a, um, a uh, sunny school DOT that will be in the hospitality room. Uh, Sister uh, Shirley is going to teach that. Um, so um, next Sunday, um, if you are here at 9 o'clock, if you can wake up at 9 o'clock, you want to, um, the women who want to have a, a, that, that DOT study, the men were already in our DOT, so any man, man um, that wants to come, 9 o'clock, will be in the sanctuary. So we have those two DOTs um, operating. Okay, can we all stand? Uh, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for just another day as we, as we journey through 2022. We just thank you for just allowing us just to see this day that was never been seen before. God, we pray that as we uh, journey through this week, Father, that 
that each and every one uh, that, it, that hears my voice, whether it's here in person or virtually, that they understand that they have this inheritance. This inheritance is already guaranteed to them. Allow them to walk out and get that mountain that God has already said that is yours. Get, allow them to possess that inheritance, Father. And even though there might be struggles and trials and hardships along the way, Father, we pray that they will have that spirit of courage and have a spirit of faith, have that spirit of encouragement and spirit of blessings and faithfulness, Father, that will allow them to get through this week and through any obstacle that is in front of them. And will forever give your son Jesus all of our honor, our glory, and our praise. Amen. Amen.